Welcome to another exciting edition of the Million Dollar Peddlers. I'm Paper Guy. And I'm Mr. Magazine. And today is our favorite time. We count our money. I'm done. Um, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I'm done way before you were. Um, some of the interesting things that we've sold that hopefully you're able to find when you're out there. Things are starting to open up again. We've got estate sales starting up, at least here in New York. Uh, a lot of states, I've, I've been reading various places, thrift stores are opening up. Uh, all that sort of thing. So going to be a lot of buying opportunities. So we're going to tell you some things to look for when you're out there. You can start off again as always because right. people like to see the <laughs> the noise that you bring. First up is uh, sports. Um, since there's no sports going on out there, we got some going on in here. Uh, this is just a magazine called Sports Card. I think monthly, something like that. Ken Griffey Jr. on the cover. But the key is it's complete with the mint sheet of cards, the uncut cards. Now, the mistake I made years ago to my employees, never telling them, check for the cards and list if they have or don't have. So then, you know, you get these emails, are the cards in them, are they not in them? Wow. So I bought a big collection a few years back, and I said, remember, they're all mint with cards, and now these are the ones that are selling. So it's a big difference with, with cards or without cards. So. Now let me ask a quick question about that, and you may not know. Sure. Are the cards perforated or not perforated in there? Uh, these were not. Not perforated. And this, yeah, some they do have perforations. But Cause I'm just wondering, because would people go and get that graded, or would you get the whole magazine graded, or would um, they? Because because isn't there like a Tiger Woods yeah, and the Sports Illustrated for kids? Yeah, Sports Illustrated for kids. It's yeah, those are popular. Um, but they are perforated, and you can grade them. It's very hard to get a high grade because of the perforations on them. But I think with these, you'd have to cut them. So unless you had like a you know a cutting machine that would do it perfectly, I don't think it'd be worth you know taking a chance on them. So, all right, next up, uh, I have a uh, subscription to this <laughs> New York Times. <laughs> This was from January 14, 2019. Donald Trump, border wall, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, 20 bucks I got on it. I was asking like 40 something bucks, but what is it, $100 or something? And, uh, issue something issue, like yes. so, something yeah. like that. That's, a, that's actually an interesting idea uh, to be doing that, um, especially because with everything going on with the coronavirus, I, I would certainly expect that those would be selling, or if they're not now, they would be in a sure. few years. Right, right. Um, I guess that just goes to show you too. It's it's 2019, so what is it? It's just over a year old, yeah. and people still want it, want to read about it, all that sort of thing. So these are crazy times we're living in, and people want to buy yeah. it for for history. And yeah. here you are copying me after last week. I showed you about the JFK <laughs> magazine right. or uh, newspapers. Yeah, don't throw the new newspapers out. You know, everyone else does, and then if you have them, you can make some money off them. I use mine as fish wrap. Oh, nice. All right, here we go. I upgraded uh, a figure in my collection, uh, my Star Wars vintage unopened collection. That's so why I sold my loose one, or my one that uh, wasn't graded. So you got the Empire Strikes Back on Solo Hoth. It went for about 200 bucks. It was probably excellent to near mint condition on it. I'd probably rate it like a, jeez, uh, 8.5 or so. Now, I'm not much of a, a Star Wars fan or collector of the things, but he's got 31 backs. Uh, so the, the packaging on the back of the card... It would have 31 pictures of the action figures at that point when they made them. So the earlier, I think they started with 12 back would be the first one from 77. Then it went to 20, 21 back, 31, and so forth. So people collect all the various variations? A lot of, yeah, a lot of variations. Yeah. Now, for that that one there, or, or say a common one that's been out the whole time, mm -hmm. uh, say the Luke Skywalker. Did the packaging change in other ways as well between, like, let's say a 12 and a 20 back or 12 and 18 back or whatever? Or was yeah. it the same packaging well, except the back had changed? And I learned this a few years ago, and you get, it's, there's crazy collectors out there. But if you go to the 12-backs, there's mm -hmm. three versions of the 12-backs, each one. There's an A, B, and C. So the 12-back A would be the very first one that ever came out. Then B, there's a variation. And they had a mail-away on C. So, like, you know, it changes through and through. And then the 20, they, they had 20 backs, which didn't last too long. And then they came right out to 21 back because the Boba Fett was the uh, mail-away. Oh, the mail-away so, one, yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it gets crazy, collector. And then the, the fronts, they have different picture than the front or a mail away uh, sticker or something and so forth and uh, drives the price up. Well, let me ask you one other quick question while we're talking about this because again I don't do very much with action figures but you know back in the day I, w I would have been a kid when this was uh, 
out, the movie was out, and so I would have probably went to my local Woolworths or something like that, Kresge's, they're probably neither of those are still around, and they would have had the price sticker on them. Does mm -hmm. that detract from the value, or is it kind of accepted? Uh, it is accepted, believe it or not. I thought, I prefer them without, you know, or if they're in a goofy spot, you know, I would think to me they're worth less. I want something that at least looks normal and straight mm -hmm. in the corner like this one. But yeah, it doesn't uh, detract from them at all. Okay. Yeah. I will keep with the Star Wars theme. Um, I sold a case of these. Um, the mailer box was open, but uh, there was 10 sealed boxes inside, complete case. Uh, I actually bought it with nine boxes, and I had one listed on oh, Amazon okay. that I ended and completed it, and then it sold. Now, where did you so, get that from? Uh, it was a local guy that bought it from, um, what was it? Um, what's the company that makes the... Yep, Bags Unlimited. Oh, okay. Macaluso, they're related, and he had uh, he knew him, so he had a lot of unopened stuff. I bought the sealed Elvis. Um, oh, okay, right. Him as well. yeah. show us previously. So every now and then he'll come in. If he needs a few bucks, he'll sell me some vintage stuff. So oh, that's cool. Pretty cool. You know, I'm a collector, but I already have the cards and so forth, so I figured, you know, get rid of that. If you if he ever comes in with some uh, 52 tops high number baseball, I'll give you a dollar a pack. Ooh. So just uh, keep that in the back of your mind. If you, I'll keep the man on, you can have everyone else. Deal. All right. <laughs> Lastly, for me, um, I sold five of these to one gentleman. Um, Fortune magazines bound from the 30s, uh, 500 bucks. I couldn't argue with that. Uh, I took that in a heartbeat. I think he paid full price. Like he didn't even make offers, okay. and he paid full shipping and so forth. So that was a big money maker for me. And I think we talked about those before. You had purchased a large uh, collection of vinyl volumes, and I know mm -hmm. we've told people before always be on the lookout for vinyl volumes. And uh, another nice thing about this one over here is this does feature the advertisements, which again is right. is uncommon. Yeah. A lot of times they they bind them without the. Yeah, the, yeah, these had all the covers. They were all complete, and uh, that's why I got a premium for them. At least I felt I got a premium. Yeah, so. no, that's very nice. So. Very nice. All right, now everybody can tune on out uh, because <clears throat> no big big dollar stuff coming here. But on the other side, these are things I'm selling here are probably the things you're more likely to find when you're out of the sale. So stay tuned. Uh, first thing we have over here is Siegfried and Roy. And that only took me 12 years to sell. <laughs> exactly. That only uh, took me 12 years to sell. Um, I think, was it a Mont Montecor? He's probably in that. One of them just died one of them from passed corona. Away, was right. it because of Corona? I believe it yeah, was, yeah. Right. yeah. So it took 12 years to sell, but somebody ended up buying Even the uh, the mauling by the tiger wasn't able to sell it. Hmm. <laughs> but kind of, a lot of these out there, um, you will find something or other like this. So I ended up, I took, you know, I got full price on it. Do, did get the shipping because back then I was charging shipping. So I got $14 out of it. It. Again, you're at a sale, you find it somewhere for a dollar, something or other like that. I also sold a similar one on Amazon as well. So they are selling. There's probably a lot fewer of them on now than there were, you know, months ago. So something or other you will see out there. Uh, next thing over here, and, and this actually surprised me. And the reason why it surprised me is I got a couple of these from somebody that I buy from. There are none on eBay. You would think that something rather like this, it's just, it, it says photo album, but literally what it is, it's, and I forget how big it is, but it's 68 pages, 74 pages, mm -hmm. 72 pages, something like that. It's a book with lots and lots of pictures of the band. And you would definitely think that there would be a lot of these because they, they did make a lot of merchandise of the new kids on the block. And a lot of it was mass produced and then a lot of it ended up like at the dollar stores, <clears throat> hmm. uh, you know, in the back end or the, the big lots and all that sort of thing, just because they sold as many of them as they could when they were popular. And then after they weren't popular anymore, they dumped them all in the, you know, in the secondary market, those kind of places, the big lots and that sort of thing. Hmm. You would think there's a lot of these out there. Put it up for auction. I got a $20 bid. I was more than happy with that. Uh, I've got another one that'll be listed. So if you want this for your collection, which I'm sure that you do. Well, I do have a question. I'm not sure. a big fan. You know, I know He-Man, they go M-O-T-U. Do people really use this search on N-K-O-T-V? Yes, they do. Wow, impressive. Yep. Yes, they do. Hmm. Um, so it's kind of a, a neat little thing uh, out there. So, you know, you find this. Uh, another thing that you probably could find nowadays out at sales fairly regularly would be things like One Direction and all that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> they will sell. There are people that collected them, and maybe the One Direction people aren't old enough yet to be buying the things, but they will in a few years. So if you've got a longer time frame, hey, you're at a sale, you find some One Direction stuff, buy it, put it aside, list it in five, six years. It, it will sell. That's, um, that's what I got from the Manhattan deal. Remember that? Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yep. Binders and portfolios Tons and so forth. One yeah. Direction stuff, yep. Um, next thing we have here, what's new, Pussycat? Good old Tom Jones. Not uh, a good picture of his mouth wide open. Like that. <laughs> yeah. It was uh, front cover of the magazine there. Um, 
It's kind of an interesting thing. I just basically wanted to do my singing right there. Um, <laughs> I should do my own YouTube channel, nothing but singing. Uh, uh, it's kind of a neat little item there, though. It's probably hard to find. Not a lot of demand. It took five years to sell, but just kind of a neat, neat cover. Uh, you'll find things like this out there, too. Probably start seeing more of it out there as the people that were big Tom Jones collectors probably will be selling off their collections as they get older and that sort of thing. Or giving them away. Yeah, <laughs> some of that as well. <laughs> but just a neat thing. Uh, next thing we have over here, this is kind of kind of interesting. Uh, it is a little bit damaged, as you can see up over here. I oh, can't get the mouse working, but in the top corner, it's it's basically a kid's tom tom, for lack of a better word. It's about this size, and a kid would have like either probably hit his hand, or maybe it came with some little uh, those little wooden drumsticks. Uh, I'm not really certain. Is it, it supposed to hang and you hit it like that maybe? See that, that little hole there? No, no, no. Oh. Definitely would be oh, yeah. you'd put it in your lap or hold it. And again, you just gotcha. probably hit on it with that. Um, God, that would have been annoying. <laughs> 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 it would have been a souvenir, obviously, aimed at children. Don't really know the date. I would have, I'd guess 1960s probably just from looking at it, although I'm not a huge expert on, on souvenir tom-toms. Um, but it had been sitting in my garage for years. So I went out and I sourced stuff out of the garage and found that. And I said, what am I going to do with it? Uh, put it on and it actually sold fairly quickly. So That's much nice. rather have the money in my pocket than, than that sitting out in the garage. Um, and again, this is the kind of thing that you will be able to find out there. A lot of people went on vacations. They bought the souvenirs. Now they're finding them in the attic. They're finding them wherever. When garage sales start opening up, this is the kind of thing you can find at them. They just put them out there. They ask a dollar on it, whatever buy it somebody probably went to went to the caverns and is interested in getting a piece from oh my gosh i had that one as a kid or i went there or whatever the case happens to be you know just neat little things that you can find out there um now this one i thought was a little bit interesting no comps couldn't find anybody that had it fm broadcasting did a bunch of research on it and, and this is where I can afford to do the research that you cannot afford to pay your employees to do. This actually is a second print, believe that or not, hmm. even though it's not marked as such. Um, the FM broadcasting spectrum did not exist until the early 1940s. And then they were pushing for it for the, uh, the government to allow hmm. radio communication over it and all that sort of thing. And this was the second print that was put out. Um, saying that, hey, FM is going to be this great new thing coming along. And the guy that bought it, I'm not certain of his name, but it was something like Radio History or something like that. So obviously, you know, it's, it's a little piece that he hasn't seen either, which is kind of odd because when I did my research on it, I found they made something like 100,000 of these or something rather like that. Wow. <laughs> Nobody knows where they are at this point. None have been sold on eBay until this one. Uh, all that sort of thing. So it's it's just kind of an, an interesting little piece. Um, I knew it would be good. It just had to find its buyer. And the other problem is, how do you find a buyer on it? Because one thing, if you go on eBay, there's a lot of categories for like vintage movies, vintage television, all that kind of thing. There's mm -hmm. not a vintage radio category. There's not one. So you just kind of do the best that you can and you hope that the radio collectors can find it. Cool. Um, and then the last thing, is how a, a dear little couple went abroad. And the only reason I posted it is because it was kind of interesting. I had one listed in 2017, bought things at auction, bought things at fleas, whatever, came across another one. A lot of times what I do is I do searches if the thing looks at all familiar to me, and sure enough, I found that I had one. So I <laughs> listed a second one, and I said, hey, and, you know, got two of them. Yeah. Somebody made me an offer on both of them. Wow brings the question up why <laughs> i mean i'm very thankful that they did and i'm very happy that they did but this is the kind of thing that i have been racking my brain all day trying to figure out why somebody happened to want two of them i don't really know but i know that a lot of people out there don't like to use the uh, quantity on ebay I'm a big fan of it uh, otherwise what would have happened is i would have listed one this person would have bought one the other one would be sitting in a box somewhere and I'd find it in two or three or four years from now and I'd list it all from scratch. This way, by using the quantity, I was able to get rid of both of them. They're gone and, and that's it on it. So I, I know you don't use quantity that often on eBay. No. 
Um, you're not exactly set up for it either though, because again, it's, it's a lot of work and we've shown videos before on your numbering system, all that kind of thing. Right. Literally what you'd have to do is you'd have to find it and say, okay, now get, let's get this into a 6497 box and pull it and put it in there and yeah. it's a lot of extra work. So you're not really set up for it. Somebody small like me is set up for it. So it's kind of a, a thing to do if you're able to do so is use the quantity. Um, it, it did get me an extra sale in this instance. Nice. So, yeah. So that's uh, what we have for you this week. And hopefully next week we bring you some more incredible things. It is just amazing. Just the things that week after week that you end up selling. I, my hat's off to you. You do sell some very good things. And I sell some mediocre things every week. So I can do my part as well. So thank you very much and stay safe. Take it easy. Thank you.